Two small identical charged spheres, each having a mass m and a charge q hanging in equilibrium by light strings of equal length l, okay? From a common point as shown in the figure below. Draw a free body diagrams for the two charges, write down the equations determining equilibrium for each charged sphere, and find the angle theta made by each string with the vertical, assuming it is small enough. So we can use approximation sine theta as approximately tangent of theta, which is almost theta. Okay, so for starters, if the small angle approximation applies here, then we can be pretty sure that this is not drawn to scale. So with that in mind, I start by drawing a picture. Check, done. Now we'll do some free body diagrams. So we have, on this guy, we have force due to gravity. Check. I'll do this one too because I already have out the blue pen. Get out the green pen for electrostatic. So they're the same charge, so they're opposing. Oh, that's a terrible arrow. So arrow, there we go. Force electric. And then we have the tension. And since everything is in equilibrium, it will all balance out. And I'm going to do it like, uh, let's see, I'll get another color, purple. Then I'll call this tension Y. This will be tension X, which is just the decomposition of this tension vector right here. So we know that all the um, forces in the X direction are going to equal each other, and we know that all the uh, forces in the y direction are going to equal each other. So I could say something like all forces, some of all forces in the y direction equal zero. And then we could also say the same thing for x, I guess something similar, x equals zero. So from there then, I can, let's see here, I'll probably start with the x direction. And I, I'll probably, hmm, I think I'll look at this guy just to start with, because we could look at either, either one. So we're going to say that force electric equals tension x. And I said that all sum up to zero. What that means is this is, since they're in opposite directions, one would be a negative. So when you add them up together, when their powers combine, you get zero. And looking at theta here and x there, then that would be the tension times sine of theta. Okay? So then we have force gravity equals, would be canceled out by tension y, or equal to, equal to the negative of tension y, which would be t cosine of theta. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Okay, so now I'm going to write out what the force electric is. So the force electric is k q1 q2 over r squared. So Q's, they're both the same, Q1 and Q2. So this will be KQ squared. And I'll find out what R is. So R is going to be this distance right there. So it will be the distance between the two charges. And we know that this distance right here is going to be L times sine theta. So R would be, so wait a second r would be 2L sine theta. And the reason we have the 2 there is because L sine theta just gives us this distance right there. So we have two of those, and that gives us the full, full distance. But we don't want r. We want r squared. So we go r squared equals 4L squared sine squared theta. Not too bad, not too bad. Okay, keep going. So... We'll finish up this part right here. We get 4L squared sine squared theta. Now, at this point, I'm going to use the small angle approximation to kind of simplify this a little bit. So if you're not familiar with, this, uh, with the um, small angle approximation, it, one of the things, one of the ways you can help maybe visualize or get a feel for it is if you know the Taylor series, depending on how far along, along you are in calculus. The Taylor series for sine of theta starts out with something along the lines of x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial plus, or, oops, minus dot dot dot. While cosine of theta equals 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth 
over a four factorial. Well, this one here can be looked at as x to the zero, kind of keep, help keep the pattern. And so what the small angle approximation is, is when you have something small and you square it, it gets extra small, almost negligibly, neg negligibly so. So what you're saying is this first order approximation, just the first terms here, so this is one, is close enough. And so that's how you get sine of theta equals theta, right there. Hoop, hoop. Those are actually, yeah, it's theta. Hoop. And then for cosine of theta, you just have one. So that's kind of a way of getting a feel for what the um, small angle approximation is. All right, so looking back here, we have t sine theta, we have that, and so we have tension equals kq squared over 4l squared, okay? And this just equals, wait a second, I should have left in thetas there, good catch. Whoop. So this would be tension equals kq squared or 4l squared theta cubed, because that other theta over there. Okay, and over here, uh, force of gravity equals tension times 1, which is just tension. So, which will be, force of gravity will indeed be mass times gravity. There we go. And so we have equals mass times gravity. And we're trying to solve for theta here. So for th solving for theta, we would just rearrange this. Theta equals mass times gravity times 4L, no, 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 wrong. My algebra skills are lacking. KQ squared over 4L squared times mass times gravity, and this will all be to the third root, one third. There we go. See if that kind of answers the question real quick. Assuming it is small enough, uh, boom, 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 find the angle theta. So angle theta would actually have, I would have K, which is an electrostatic constant, Q, wherever the charge is, for length of the string squared times mass times gravity, all to the one-third power. So that's how I'd approach this problem. Hope that helped you. See you next time.